<laughs> We're back. Okay, so being a monster kid, I like the great works of literature like Shakespeare and War and Peace. No, that's not true. This blew my mind. Now, a lot of people know that this is really what instantly made me a monster kid. This thing, well, this, and I didn't even open it. Somebody brought this to third grade. And I'm like, what's this? And then I flipped it over and I was done. That was it, that was the moment in time. These are all Don Post Mass. These were on the back of so many famous Monsters magazines. And so that started me on this path. That's why I'm talking to you now, that magazine. But there was a magazine shortly thereafter. This by Dick Smith. This for monster kids in my generation, do-it-yourself monster makeup handbook by Dick Smith. This. I'll tell you what, you know, we're doing our little monster lab and stuff, but this guy, Dick Smith, he was the first monster lab guy. He, he wrote this, he did all sorts of stuff in Hollywood, including The Exorcist and so forth. Amazing man, very nice man. We knew him because we would call him up and say, hey, Dick, do you have anybody that just graduated from your school? He had this thing where he, he taught people and would talk to them personally and things. And he would send me out the people that are on their way to Hollywood, but they'd like stop on the way in Colorado. And so we got some really great talent from Dick and he was very helpful. In fact, I made the mistake of asking him a question one time and for 15 minutes, he went through the whole, here's how you do it, here's how you do it. <laughs> Just a wonderful guy. This is a wonderful book. And in this book is what we're gonna be talking about today is the mixture of blood that you can make with stuff out of your kitchen cabinet, mostly. Um, and we're also gonna talk about how to make blood for monster mass and things. Two totally different things. And, um, and oh, oh, and I also brought this. I left the dust on it. This is what I had as I started the business. There was almost nothing available. And this is Richard Corson's stage makeup. And in there, it told you how to do stuff for stage and makeups and things and and that I tried to apply to mass and things um, but um, these were my great literature of the monster kid life all right so I'm gonna put these places someplace safe so I've got some stuff here a lot of it comes right out of the kitchen cabinet and um, it's just normal food color, flour, Cairo syrup, and that, this comes from the Dick Smith book. And so, you just take uh, Cairo syrup, and he didn't have a formula, which is fine. It's, it's all by eye, so you put a little Cairo syrup in there, and then a little flour, to make it cloudy. Now this, you can put in your mouth. It's a little bit nasty, um, but it's, it's safe. Don't swallow it. I wouldn't do that. All right. But it's, it's I mean, it's okay. But So first we're gonna start with, um, like, blood that you would put in your mouth and you want to just get this flour and Cairo syrup I may have put a little too much flour in there um, get it stirred up so that it's kind of milky um, you can just do it with just Cairo syrup and food color but that's translucent it's not as realistic All right, and it can be any brand of food color, but do use food color, not, not um, you know, like painting pigments and stuff. You don't want to be sticking anything in your mouth that you can't, you know, use in food. 
And there are companies um, that make blood for theatrical use, you know, like if you're making a movie or something, um, or stage use. You mix this in, and you know, if it's too pink, add more food color, um, or more uh, Cairo syrup and food color. If it's too thick, you can add water. Now this again is Dick Smith's advice. I'm gonna say that needs a little more food color. And you can stir this. I've got stir sticks and cups too. So there you have it. Gory, horrible, oh gee, what happened? Very simple. And again, you can use it in your mouth if you want. Um, while I was... Uh, at the grocery store. Well, the first grocery store I went to had no Cairo syrup. And I thought, well, maybe they don't make it anymore because it's been a long time since I did this. See how it drips and looks good? Um, so just in case, I bought some other stuff. And so I thought I'd, I'd try it just again to show how you can be creative in the kitchen. So this is... Uh, I guess it's missing the label. It's, it's cooking oil. And it's clearish. Put a little of that in, a little blood. I get to tell a story. When I was a teenager, I was making movies um, with eight millimeter camera. And I had some glass jars that had the uh, Cairo uh, syrup, the food color, and flour in them. And they were just sealed in, in the basement there. And I was in the middle of the night. I heard an explosion. And I'm like, what, what blew up? And, and then I'm like, well, did I dream that? What is... And then I heard dripping. <laughs> so, I, so I turned on the lights and one of my bottles, I guess had fermented or something and it exploded in the middle of the night and made a big bloody mess. So uh, that said, you might want to, um, you might want to uh, put this stuff in plastic bottles. So I've got my um, uh, uh, cooking oil, it's a bit kind of translucent. And then I thought, well, maybe it would be more tasty if I used um, powdered sugar. And we'll just, we're gonna try this. I don't know if it's gonna work. But just, you know, this, don't be afraid to experiment as long as it's stuff in the kitchen cabinet. Let's see. That's a little translucent still. bad so this is uh, this is powdered sugar which I'm sure is a little bit tastier than flour um, food color and vegetable oil clear vegetable oil and that's, I got a little runny right now I guess I should let me try adding a little more flour just for fun but it goes to show you you can experiment with stuff and And there you have it. So, this is not as good as the Dick Smith stuff, in my opinion. But in a pinch, 
you could you could whip something up. It's like, oh shoot, I don't have Cairo syrup. Oh no, that won't stop you. You know, if you need to be attacked by a monster and need some blood, there you go. So this is, you know, this is running off too fast. The Cairo syrup is thicker and better. Um, but, you know, if you're just like exploding with blood, it's gonna look all right on film, I think. Uh-oh. I'm gonna be in trouble with mom. Don't you okay. dare touch me! So, no! No! Yeah, <laughs> by the way, Monster Kid Moms. They got it rough, but it's fun. But oh my gosh, the things Monster Kids do in the house and to themselves. Uh, but anyway, so the next thing is, this is, now that's blood to put you know in your mouth. Now, be warned, this stuff stains. So if you have a favorite shirt or pants or something, uh, you're gonna mess it up. And it stains you, food color stains you. You know, that'll, that'll take a while to get off. And, um, uh, but you know, anything for the shot, right? So um, this is what we make blood with at Distortions. Now, there are many different ways to make blood. In fact, I gotta re recommend Alan Hops with Stilpy Studios has a YouTube video and it's like called, oh, Monster Blood on the Cheap or something like that. But it's, it's if you type in uh, Stilt Beast uh, Blood, it'll probably come up. And he went through all sorts of experiments with all sorts of different materials and what it looked like. And he gets way more in depth than we do. This just works and this is what we do. So this one is Liquitex and it's gloss gel. And the reason gloss gel works better than just gloss medium is it's thick. And so when you add the watery food color, and we buy the food color in big bottles. When you add the food color to this, by the time you get the color right, it's just about perfect. And so, now you can put it in a bottle and shake it up like this but um, you can also stir it. So you get, you get some, some of this in there, and then you add the magic food color. Yeah, I'll pour a little more in. And then stir it up. And it takes a little bit of stirring to get it, get it the right consistency. In fact, I am going to put it in a little bottle and shake the tar out of it. Now I think, well, it probably needs a little more food color. So you kind of just go for the right uh, thickness and color and when you get it right when you get the right amount of blood in there it's just kind of looks right now when we're doing stuff like say a bleeding zombie well you might not want real red oxygenated blood you might want some old looking nasty stuff so what we'll do they actually at Halloween time they sell black food color which is pretty cool you probably have to get it on Amazon if it's not Halloween time, but um, you can also use, uh, since this is going on a prop, you can use black pigment from the paint store. You can just buy a little bottle of their black pigment. Um, let's see how this is looking. <clears throat> see, now that's a good thickness. That's some really creepy blood. Ouch, boy, does that hurt. And it drips a little too. You know, it's, a, it's thick and it drips. And um, you now, Alan goes into mixing blue and yellow to get different effects, and he really gets detailed. Um, the most we do around here is we, we'll take it from this, and then we'll go to adding black pigment, 
to make it a little darker. Almost always, we put a little black pigment in this, um, even if it's fresh blood, just cause it looks a little more realistic. So, that's how you make blood for film and how you make blood for mass. Now this blood, what's nice about this is it dries. And so it goes on and it's, it, it'll look wet and, and we'll, we will back this up with, um, after it dries, we'll even come back and put some clear gloss, not the gloss gel, the gloss medium. We'll spray that on and it makes it shinier. You don't have to do that, but because this is somewhat shiny, but we like to do that. So I've got a few things. I'm going to show you how I put this on. And uh, let me get this horrible wound off my arm. Um, I'm going to show you how we put it on and um, my techniques. And so, yeah, I mean, you can do whatever. It, sometimes we'll use a paintbrush, like if I'm doing guts and I got a lot of guts, I'll use a paintbrush and get in there in the cracks. So, you know, it's just pretty simple. Two ingredients, food color, Liquitex gloss medium. And that's, you know, and blood is like, that's what makes it. Blood makes it. I, you'll see that happen here. It tells, the thing is, blood tells a little bit of a story. And um, the way you put on the blood, uh, like put in their hands, just like, oh, I just mauled them before you chewed on them or whatever. So we're gonna start with this guy. I'm gonna come around here. I'm putting it in this just so I can get my hands in it easier. Cause now this is, I mean, you can brush it on and that's fine. But uh, for me, I use my hands a lot on this to get the look right. Now this guy, we probably won't put tons of blood cause he's so beautiful. But um, you just, you like, like when you're eating, you know, your, your, your face is in there. And so the, the sides of, your mouth can be um, like smeary. And I, you know, I like get some on the teeth, but I also like to be able to see the teeth. So, you know, you get a little on the tongue and stuff. And, and so you feel like he's been eating, but then I'll come back with my palm and I'll rub it. So you can still see the teeth through the blood. And once you kind of get a satisfactory amount of blood on him. Then I dip like a couple of fingers in or a whole hand and just go pew, pew, and get splats like, you know, he bit into a juggler vein, that kind of thing. Little splats, try to keep it out of their eyes. Um, and, and, and this stuff's gonna get hardened. So you wanna get it, look, you, you, don't wanna, you don't wanna leave it with the hair all weird. Just get, get it the way you want that hair. And there you have it. Next up is something that's been sitting in my office. Wow, mm, 30 years. And this is not real, by the way. I would not own a real one. This is a beautiful piece that I believe Savage Eye made back in the day, probably late 70s, early 80s. And Morris had these in stock and I was at the shop walking around and admiring this. And this one had a split or something, let's see. I don't know, it was, it was, it was flawed somehow. Oh, here it is. So you can see a little bit, there's a little bit of a split on the wood. And so I'm like, hey, Phil, give me a deal. And he did, he, he sold it to me uh, uh, for a little cheaper. Come with me as we go into the dungeon. Many people walk this way. 
but never returned. Uh -huh. Okay, let's walk this way. But see, now here's just, there's no story of this. What happened? Well, you had blood, now there's a story. He got his revenge. Maybe he did it in the night. Um, maybe he snuck up on me. I got too close to him on the wall and he bit me. We don't know, but it tells a little bit of a story. So, it's kind of hard to actually put blood on this, but we're gonna do it. So, same sort of thing. This might be a sin, I'm not sure. Because it is, what a work of art this thing was. They did a whole, they did lions and I think gorillas and all sorts of stuff. It was, it was cool. Also, when this blood dries, it'll dry a little bit darker. And get a little smeary, wipe off the teeth. Splat. Now, again, going back to story time. He's had a big meal, so he's been eating a while. And he's been gorging himself, perhaps on me. And then I'm going to let a little splat and drip down the plaque. Um, also, you know, I'm like putting more blood down here because gravity would make it drip down. Let's see, is that good? All right. That's it. He got his revenge after all those years. All right. So something like this. It's a, it's a cool zombie, but you know, is he dead? Is he is he moving around? Well, I don't know, but if he's got blood on him, suddenly he's trouble and you don't want to mess with them. And you can streak it down. I like to get the blood in the hair. Again, like he's really chowing down. Get it off the teeth a little, and then And I also, you know, like when they're grabbing, they'd have more blood on the, the inside of their hands than the outside, usually. Not that I've seen a lot of zombies eating people, but I'm just guessing. All right, finally, this guy. Now, this is, goes against kind of my rule. I like to have lighter colored clothes, like medium gray or medium brown or something like that so the blood shows but we're going to put it on the the cloth anyway so he's been up to no good and he's hungry i guess we don't know the whole story we just know that it's not good and the blood's been splatting but he seems to be enjoying himself.
country lives. So Marsha wanted to be a part of this video, but I said, nah, honey, blood and monsters is a man's world. That's what I told her. Anyway, I do gotta clean up the mess so she doesn't get upset. It's just fake. <laughs> I love these one take wonders. Good, good. You know, that doesn't taste too bad. Let's do the ah! shoot, let's Stay do away. the photo. Let's do oh. Does it look all right? Yeah, it yeah, looks yeah. good. Yeah, Don't you love me? I love you. Where are you going? We should we oh, should we, hey. we should hug or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny.